Hey there guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, Arsenal beat Chelsea in the FA Cup final yesterday 2-1. Uh, I'm with James Rowe, he's a journalist and Arsenal fan for his thoughts uh, on the final yesterday. Uh, well, James, thanks for joining us, mate. I imagine there was a lot of drinking last night, celebrating, so you must be um, obviously happy with the win, but also coming from behind as well. Uh, afternoon, uh, Bill. Nice to speak to you again. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Um, absolutely delighted. Many Arsenal fans were, were surprised that we actually went on to win the FA Cup, especially after the semi-final draw. We was written off by so many people, including our own fans. And um, nice to kind of prove everybody wrong and, and have a, a really positive end to a very topsy-turvy season. And especially, as you say, coming from behind after only five minutes when Chelsea scored. Some people were thinking the worst, but it was a, lo it was a long old day. But um, really enjoyable and nice to witness this uh, win the FA Cup for the 14th time. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, obviously, it's a shame for Arsenal fans that you couldn't be there. But, you know, at least you, got, you guys got to watch it. Um, on, mm. on early. So, um, I mean, as you say, uh, Pulisic um, scored after only five minutes. Um, was uh, was you a bit concerned at that point? Because Chelsea, in the first quarter before the drinks break, were really on top. Yeah, well, absolutely. I mean, Pulisic is a very good player. I mean, I've known of him from his time at Dortmund. And uh, he was providing a real threat as well. And uh, we just had to kind of weather the storm a little bit. And, uh, and we knew that we was in a final. And also with the, the recent memory of playing Chelsea in Baku and how that went, where some Arsenal fans were maybe in that game in particular a little bit too confident. And things can change very quickly in football. But uh, yeah, delighted to get over the line and secure European football as well. And um, onwards and upwards into next season, which is a, a very short turnaround indeed. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, for, in your opinion, how did the, uh, how did the game change? Because uh, after the first drinks break in the first half, it seems like you know Chelsea were hanging on, and then uh, and then Arsenal, you know they they had the better the second half. It looked like. So what's so what I think, change for you? Um, I think the um, instruction just from Arteta during the drinks break. I think every time, especially in the FA Cup, or even away at Sheffield United, he took the opportunity during the tea breaks, so or not just in FA Cup games, but also Premier League games, to kind of really dig deep and drill down into the finer details of what to, what to pay attention to, what to look out for, to keep concentrated. And I think the players really heeded that, that call and it kind of upped their concentration level a little bit, where they knew it was a fine balance between attacking and defending and trying to go forward. And um, I think that really helped. Um, and in terms of the final, I mean, that, did that really show how Arteta has changed Arsenal? Because, you know, whereas beforehand under... Unai Emery and even the last couple of seasons under Arsene Wenger, Chelsea would have been two or three up in in that first mm -hmm. half. But Arsenal, you know, a bit more resilient nowadays. Was that um, was that another another sign of that yesterday? I think so. I think so. I think um, Arteta has done ever so well in eight, in only eight months. You know, I was um, sceptical when he first arrived because you know, obviously, in my own position, interviewing professional managers on a regular basis as well as players. You know, it's it's simply not just a case of um, sending players across the white line. And um, obviously, and, and, and there is also a world of difference between being a number one and being a number two. And a good, a good number two doesn't necessarily make a good number one. And there's still a long way to go. And I, I commend Mikel Arteta for yesterday and his backroom staff and the players. But I also view yesterday as a good base upon which to work from. I don't necessarily think that the, um, the win yesterday is automatically going to mean but Arsenal are going to be um, fighting for top four next season. There's going to be a dramatic change. It just provides a great base upon which to work from to go forward. And uh, for, for so early in his reign as a manager, I think the first time since George Graham in his, to, to win a trophy in his, in his, in his debut season, it's a, it's a really, really good sign. And we, we've got to take it for the face value for what it is. You know, he's still learning his trade. And that's a very, very good sign and something that we can be pleased about. Oh, definitely. Um, so, which players stood out for you, really? I mean, obviously, Aubameyang has scored two goals. Um, but for me, Nicola Pepe had one of his best games for Arsenal. Um, mm. I think, you know, Xhaka and Ceballos, um, particularly in the second half, they were, you know, pulling the strings in midfield. So, which players for you stood out? Um, I think the ones you mentioned, but I'd also like to mention Kieran Tierney. I thought he played well yesterday. I think, you know, obviously with his experience at Celtic, you know, big game player, you know, involved in winning trophies in Celtic, at Celtic. A lot of people 
often criticised the Scottish League, you know, as, as it being a two-horse race. But I've spoken to a, a couple of players that have played for Celtic before, like John Heron, for example. And he was telling me about the, the pressure to play for such a club. You know, the, the expectancy levels of winning and how, you know, that can not take its toll, but it really stands you in good stead. And I think the, um, the, um, the way Kieran Tierney... Um, puts himself about and shows the way that it's, that what it's made of, you know, I think it's really impressive. And you mentioned uh, Sabayos yesterday, a penny for Unai Emery's thoughts as well, because it was a, an Unai Emery signing, OK, a loan signing. But I remember my first game of this season at home to Standard Liège back in October, uh, where I actually went to the game. And we won 4-0 against a very poor Standard Liège side. But he ran the show, it was excellent. And people were talking about you know, Danny Ceballos being a really, a really good find. But I look at it as well from the other side where you know, he's got three years left on his Real Madrid deal. And people seem to forget, especially with loan deals, Bill, that it's not simply the case of a player playing games. It's also the fact that the parent club have got a responsibility to choose the right club for the player so that he's going to get game time and improve as a player. And so I think Real Madrid also need, um, also need to be credited in that respect. And it be interesting to see what happens with him because there's, there's rumours of a move back to Spain, in particular to Valencia. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. But I think he's in full control. And uh, Aubameyang as well. You know, we, we wanted a, a big performance from him, especially with, the, um, with the, the, the need and the want of a big contract from his point of view. We needed to see it in a, in a big game that was decisive because we didn't see that in Baku. And I'm, I'm not saying that the, um, the problems we had in Baku in the Europe, Europa League final was down to purely Aubameyang. But in that game our big players didn't turn up and, and it's great for them to realise what happened then to put that right and uh, tremendous finishes particularly for the second goal and a solid penalty and it's kind of won us today really but I think it was a collective team effort all in all. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so just fine, Lynn James, uh, you know, obviously Mikel Tate's debut season, you know, capped off in the perfect style. Um, do you think this success and the uh, the way the you know, few good performances at the end of the season, do you think it will be a springboard for next season? I hope so. But I also think that a lot of football fans, and I, I'm, I'm also going to generalise here, not just in terms of Arsenal fans, but it's just my own personal opinion. People forget how long a football season actually is. I mean, I think, I think some people get caught up in, you know, the, the emotion of, of, of games coming thick and fast and cup games and, and, and pinpoints in a season. I mean, for, for me... Um, I was at the double header where we lost to um, to Frankfurt at home, and then I took the train up from London to Norwich, and I got into my hotel room in Norwich, and I got a message from a friend of mine who knew Emery had been sacked. And for me, the remainder of the season then was damage limitation. I certainly wasn't expecting Arsenal to win the FA Cup. I wasn't expecting Arsenal to qualify for the Champions League or, or Europe in terms of a league position, and um, and we've managed to turn it around. But um, I think a lot of fans also have to remember to enjoy it. You know, we're in a position where, unfortunately, at the moment, safety is paramount. It's the most important thing. And fans are unable to attend matches at the moment. And I think when, it, when they are allowed to return, I think they all need to remember that it's a, um, it's a long, old season. You know, many, many, many ups and downs, but also remember to enjoy it. And I think that it could well be a springboard for next season. But when you've got the likes of um, West Brom and Leeds getting promoted and the one of Fulham, Brentford also going up, Aston Villa staying up. I mean, if you look at the Premier League table for the, for the new season and the names of the clubs involved in the rich history of certain clubs, it's like a who's who of English football. So next season is going to be a, um, it's going to be a really difficult season for everybody, not just... Uh, not just Arsenal, also the likes of Manchester United, Manchester City. And, um, you know, the game's going to come thick and fast. Home advantage is going to play a key role. So I hope we can use it as a springboard. But as the, um, as the saying goes, one game at a time. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to remember that. Um, great. Well, thanks for joining us, James. Um, well, thanks, everyone, for watching this. Um, if you are new to our channel, please subscribe to us. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. Uh, like this video if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you next time. Bye for now.